Howdy, it's Kyle going over some interesting facts and trivia about U.S. geography relating to cities, counties, and states. Previously, I've posted a video talking about the longest and deepest canyons, tallest waterfalls, deepest lakes, longest caves, and other physical features like that. I'll leave a link in the description to that one if you want to check it out. But here, I want to go over things regarding more people-type things, so cities and counties and states. So things like population, density, area, and elevation, just to check out some other type of facts for the U.S. And after this, you'll know all kinds of really cool trivia about geography. You can impress your friends with knowledge about what the lowest elevation city in the country is and other stuff like that. So let's check out some interesting facts and trivia about U.S. geography. I'm going to start by talking about capital cities. The most populous capital in the country is Phoenix, Arizona, with almost 1.7 million people. The population has doubled since 1990, and there's been massive growth since 1950 with the advent of central air conditioning. Phoenix is more than one and a half times the size of Austin, Texas, which is the second most populous capital in the U.S. The most populous capital metro area in the country is Atlanta, Georgia, with about 6.3 million people in the metro area. It's the sixth largest metro in the country. If you're looking at combined metros, the Boston, Massachusetts, Providence, Rhode Island combined metro area, because they're both state capitals, would be larger than Atlanta, but the overall single largest capital city metro area is Atlanta. The least populous capital city in the U.S. is Montpelier, Vermont, with about 8,000 people. There are only 648,000 people in the entire state of Vermont. It's the second least populous state in the country, so you would expect the capital city to be small. There was a major flood that occurred there in 2023. I'm not sure how much that has affected the population, if at all, but either way, Montpelier, Vermont is the least populous capital city in the U.S. For capital buildings, the tallest one is the one in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It stands at about 450 feet. It's one of three state capitals that is a high-rise. The other two are Nebraska and North Dakota. The shortest of the state capital buildings in the U.S. is the one in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It only stands at 35 feet. It's a three-story building. Keeping it in New Mexico, the capital city at the highest elevation is Santa Fe. It sits at 7,200 feet. That's more than 1,000 feet above the second highest, which is Cheyenne, Wyoming, at just over 6,000 feet. And Denver, Colorado, the mile-high city at 5,280 feet, is the third highest state capital in the country. The lowest elevation state capital in the U.S. is Honolulu, Hawaii. It sits at only 16 feet above sea level. Of course, it's right there along the ocean. The second lowest elevation capital in the U.S. is Dover, Delaware, at 30 feet, which is not along the coast. And something else for Santa Fe, it's the oldest state capital in the U.S. It was founded in 1610, and it's the oldest European settlement in the U.S. west of the Mississippi River. The overall oldest European settlement in the U.S. is St. Augustine, Florida, which was founded by the Spanish in 1565. Now for just cities as a whole, the largest city in the U.S. in population is New York City, with about 8.2 million people. It's also the most densely populated large city in the country. There are a couple of suburbs in the U.S. that are more densely populated than this, but New York is, in terms of big city, the most dense. At over 8 million people, it's more than twice the size of Los Angeles, the second largest city in the U.S. And New York City alone has more people than 38 states. For the lowest population town in the U.S., there isn't a single one. There are actually quite a few where the population is anywhere between one and three people, where it might just be a single guy or one small family. So I was hoping there would be one that is like the one, but there's actually quite a few with less than five people. The largest city that sits along one of the Great Lakes is Chicago, Illinois. There are about 2.6 million people that live in the city of Chicago. So New York, LA, and Chicago might be the largest cities in population, but not in area. In area, the largest incorporated city in the country is Sitka, Alaska, which is over 2,870 square miles. Now, obviously, the town itself is very small, and the vast majority of that land is just open wilderness outside of the town. The largest town in the contiguous U.S. is Tribune, Kansas. It's about 778 square miles, and it's a joint city-county consolidation with Greeley County. That occurred in 2009, but prior to that, the largest city-county consolidation in the country was Jacksonville, Florida. And if you've ever met somebody from Jacksonville, they will let you know within the first 30 seconds that the city is actually the largest city in Florida in terms of population and area. The most populous suburb in the U.S. is Mesa, Arizona, with about 510,000 people. It's a suburb of Phoenix and is the only suburb in the U.S. that has over a half a million people by itself. Phoenix, as a metro, doesn't have a large number of suburbs. There's a handful of them that each have six figures in population. 
So Phoenix, the most populous capital city, and Mesa, the most populous suburb in the country. The most populous island in the country is Long Island, New York, with about 8 million people. The physical feature of Long Island includes the boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens, which are part of New York City, as well as Nassau and Suffolk County. I think people that live in Brooklyn and Queens don't normally say they live on Long Island, even though they do live on the physical feature. And now I'm going to talk about elevation. The highest altitude incorporated town in the U.S. is Alma, Colorado. It stands at 10,361 feet. In fact, every town in the U.S. over 8,700 feet is in Colorado except for one in Utah. And all of the towns in the U.S. over 7,900 feet are in Colorado, Utah, or New Mexico. Alma, Colorado only has about 300 people. The highest elevation city in the U.S. with over 10,000 people is Los Alamos, New Mexico at 7,320 feet. Earlier, I had mentioned how Santa Fe is the highest elevation capital in the country. It's also the highest elevation city in the U.S., over 15,000 people, and it has 84,000 people. The lowest elevation town in the U.S. is beautiful Bombay Beach, California. It sits at 226 feet below sea level along the shores of the Salton Sea. In fact, every town in the U.S. except for one that's below sea level is in this part of southeastern California. And you may know about the Salton Sea, that giant lake in southeastern California. Well, that's a big engineering disaster. They were trying to pipe water from the Colorado River to Los Angeles, but there was a failure in it. And because it's below sea level, all that water spilled and left a giant lake. But most of that entire county of Imperial County, which has about 180,000 people, is below sea level. The only other town in the U.S. that has portions below sea level is New Orleans. Portions of the city are about 7 feet below sea level, but a good chunk of New Orleans is above sea level. Now I want to talk about the most and least primate metro areas in the U.S. In a high primate metro, the largest city is a large percentage of the overall area population. And it's the opposite for a low primate metro where the center city is a relatively small part of the overall metro population. The highest primate metro area over 1 million people is El Paso, Texas. The city of El Paso's population is 870,000. The metro area is about 1.1 million. So 79% of the overall metro population lives in El Paso. That's the most primate metro over 1 million. The most primate metro over 2 million is Columbus, Ohio. The city has 913,000 people. The metro has about 2.2 million. About 42% of the overall metro population lives in the city of Columbus. The least primate large metro in the U.S. is Atlanta. There are 510,000 people in the city and over 6.3 million in the metro. So only 8% of the overall Atlanta metro population lives in the city of Atlanta itself. Now going over to county statistics, the most populous county in the U.S. is Los Angeles County at about 9.6 million people. That's more people than 40 states, although right now there is a population decline. But even before the population decline since 2020, there was very slow growth going back to 2000. The least populous county in the country is Loving County, Texas, with about 43 people. I'm not sure what's going on there, but at the 2020 census, there were 64 people. That has to be the highest population percentage decrease of any county in the U.S. About one-third of the people have left in the past three years. The largest county in area in the U.S. is San Bernardino County in Southern California. It's over 20,000 square miles, which is larger than nine states and almost as large as West Virginia. The population of the entire county is over 2 million people, but the vast majority live in the southwestern corner, which is basically suburbs to Los Angeles. The vast majority of the area of the county is just open Mojave Desert. The largest county equivalent in the U.S. is the Yukon Koyukuk Borough in Alaska. It's about 146,000 square miles, which is about the size of Montana or Bangladesh. At the far other end of the spectrum is the smallest county in the country, Kalaweo County, Hawaii. It's only about 12 square miles, and at one point it was essentially a quarantine for people with leprosy. The smallest county equivalent in the U.S. is Falls Church, Virginia. It's only two square miles. Virginia has this weird thing where they have cities and towns that aren't part of counties, so Falls Church is not in a county, so it's the smallest county equivalent in the country, and again, only two square miles. The county with the highest population density in the country is New York County, which is just the Manhattan borough of New York City. There are about 69,000 people per square mile there. That's pretty crowded. 
The least densely populated county in the country is again good old Loving County, Texas, only 0.1 person per square mile. But that's essentially Manhattan compared to the Yukon Koyukuk census area in Alaska. There's only 0.03 people per square mile there. Now I want to start talking about some state trivia. The largest state in the country in area is, of course, Alaska. You can see here just how big it is compared to the contiguous U.S. Texas is the largest state in the contiguous U.S., but Alaska is more than twice the size of Texas. At the other end of the spectrum, Rhode Island is the smallest state in the country in area. The state with the highest population density is New Jersey. There are over 9 million people that live in this small state, and it has over 1,200 people per square mile. And of course, the state with the lowest population density is Alaska. There are only 700,000 people in that giant state and only one person per square mile there. Of the contiguous 48 states, Wyoming has the lowest population density. There are about 600,000 people that live there and 6,000 people per square mile. So here's a trivia question for you. What state is closest in size to the Big Island in Hawaii? Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, or Rhode Island? Hawaii is one of the smallest states in the country in area, but whenever we see Hawaii on a U.S. map, it's always kind of like this. You don't really know how big it is. And the answer is Connecticut. And the Big Island itself is the largest island in the U.S., although, again, Long Island is the largest of the contiguous U.S. Although, is it really contiguous if it's offshore? Amongst the coastal states, the states that have the highest percentage of the population living in a coastal county are Hawaii, Delaware, and Rhode Island, where 100% of the people that live there live in a coastal county. Fourth on the list would be Florida. About 75% of the population there lives in a coastal county. And at the far other end of this category, the state with the least percentage of the population living in a coastal county is Oregon. Only 14% of the population in Oregon lives in a coastal county. And that even includes Lane County, where Eugene is, even though Eugene is pretty far inland. The entire Oregon coast is just state parks and small towns. Amongst the Great Lakes states, the state with the highest percentage of the population living in a county that borders one of the lakes is Illinois. Approximately half of the population of Illinois, about 6 million people, live in either Cook County, which is where Chicago is, or Lake County, which is just north of that, that goes up to the Wisconsin state line. The Great Lakes state that has the fewest percentage of the population living in one of the Great Lakes counties is Pennsylvania. There are about 12.9 people in Pennsylvania and only 270,000 people in Erie County, which is the only county that borders one of the Great Lakes. So only 2% of the Pennsylvania population lives on a Great Lake. I think most people know that Denali in Alaska is the highest point in the U.S. at over 20,300 feet. The state with the lowest Highest elevation is Florida. It's Britain Hill at only 345 feet. The state with the lowest average elevation across the entire state is Delaware. The average elevation is only 45 feet. And at the other end of the spectrum, the state with the highest average elevation across the entire state is Colorado. The average elevation is over 6,800 feet, and the lowest point in the entire state is 3,300 feet. Hey, Colorado, you've got all those 14ers, but you don't have the highest one, now do you? Mount Whitney! So that was my look at some interesting geography facts and trivia, and look in the future for one where I talk about the hottest and coldest and rainiest and snowiest and windiest, sunniest, cloudiest, and foggiest cities, counties, and states as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve, and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah... Thanks for watching, Geography King, signing out.